Periscope, what's up? Greg Howes, it is Thursday morning. It is cold out there. Come on, let's go. High energy Thursday, let's go, let's go. Good morning, good morning. Von Hamilton, good morning. Good to have you on. Thanks for inviting people to come on. Cold out there today. My my truck said it's minus one in Chicago. Freeport, Illinois. Good morning, Jackson, Mississippi. Mississippi, Mississippi is in the house. South Carolina. Good morning. I hope that's South Carolina, not USC in California. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Got the coffee going. Hot apple cider and whipped cream. Woo. Wow. Crowley, Texas. Crowley, Texas. Okay, California, early morning out there. Houston, good morning. Hazelcrest, Atlanta. Columbia, South Carolina. Okay, good. Just so you're not USC. I'm a UCLA guy. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. By the way, UCLA is number two in the country undefeated, 11-0. They won their 11th game last night, 102-62 over UC Santa Barbara. They've already beaten number one Kentucky, and they beat Michigan. They had a great start to the season. UCLA basketball is back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy about that. Football team stunk, but the basketball team is back. Yeah, really, really, yeah, really. <laughs> good morning, good morning. My words are so powerful. The words about UCLA, those are powerful. Oh, hallelujah. Cold out there, minus one in Chicago. At least where I am, minus one. Gotta stay warm today. Gotta cuddle up to somebody. Get a blanket around to do something. Wow. December weather in Chicago. You never know. You never know what's going to happen. Good morning, guys. God bless you. Great to have you on with me this morning. This is Leader Scope. I am Greg Howes, Gloria in Mississippi. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Mildred Bowers, good morning. Tammy, I see you. Good morning. Good morning, you guys. Good morning. God bless you. We had our children's uh, program at Cornerstone last night. Uh, Cornerstone folks, if you weren't able to make it, I have some of it on my Facebook page. I did some video of it, uh, Facebook Live and some pictures and so forth. So it's all there. Monica, good morning. Columbia, South Carolina, good morning. Tammy Holloway, good morning. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, thank you. I want us to get back into some, uh, some uh, talking about the fight of faith. Uh, we've been using 1 Timothy chapter 6, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12. The Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. So by faith we lay hold of spiritual things. We lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and you've confessed the good confession. You are confessing a good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of many witnesses. In other words, there are a lot of people around watching how you are fighting the fight of faith. And they're listening to the words that you speak. Not only people, but de demonic forces. The same thing. They're watching how you act. They're watching how you behave. And they're listening to the words that you speak in the midst of the battle. Because your words will betray your level of faith. Or should I say, will expose your level of faith. Absolutely. Absolutely. So fight the good fight of faith. Contend for the prize Go by what your convictions are. Go by what you've been persuaded of in the truth of the Word of God. Now, we've been seeing some elements that all of us deal with uh, that are involved in this fight of faith. One of them is fear, and by faith we overcome fear. Another one that we looked at yesterday is the traditions of men, the traditions of men, and by faith we must believe in the truth of the Word of God, and the Word of God becomes effectual when we believe it, when we trust in it. If we're leaning on the traditions of men, we're making the word of God of no effect in our lives. Whether those traditions are coming from religious leaders or they're coming from family members, relatives that we hold dear to our hearts, and yet they've been filling our, our minds with the traditions of men, 
all of that will move us away from the truth of the word of God. And we overcome it by faith. We overcome the traditions of men by faith. Now today, I want to come at the aspect of human reasoning. Human reasoning that will move us away from God. And the only way we can overcome human reasoning is by our faith. We overcome by faith. And so we're going to fight the good fight of faith. And part of our fight is with human reasoning. So 2 Corinthians chapter 10 is the key scripture for this. Verses 3 through 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. This is not a natural warfare. But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So here we have strongholds that are mentioned by Paul the Apostle. A lot of times we use this scripture when we're praying over cities and, and areas and neighborhoods and we're pulling down spiritual strongholds over cities. And, and I think it's okay to use it that way. But the actual context of this scripture has to do with our, our thought life. It has to do with our thoughts, our emotions, our soul, the condition of our soul. And so this scripture is telling us that when we recognize strongholds in the mind, in the emotions, it becomes our responsibility to exercise authority, to exercise the power of God by faith, and pull those strongholds down. Now a stronghold <clears throat> gets established when you have a combining of your thoughts and your emotions. When your emotions get connected to a thought, and you start actually feeling that thought, it becomes a stronghold in your life. Now, Paul is, is referring here to the arguments that we come up with, the speculations, the imaginations, the, the opinions of our humanity that we manufacture and we begin to lift these things up against what we know to be true about God. Our own human reasoning is, is kicking against the knowledge of God. Our own opinions, our own arguments, our own imaginations are kicking against the knowledge of God. So when we see that happening, we must pull those arguments down. We must rid ourselves of those opinions and those imaginations that are pushing against the knowledge of God. And the scripture says that we must take every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Every thought we take like a prisoner of war and we bring it under the obedience of Christ, the, the, the authority of Christ. So we make our thoughts obey Christ the anointed one. My thoughts are not going to just be governed by whatever I think is right, but I want to bring my thoughts under the dominion, under the authority, under the influence of Jesus Christ himself. Proverbs 23 and verse 7 tells us, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Another way of saying that is, whatever you believe about yourself is what you become. And so we're either believing what we think about ourselves or what somebody else says about us, or we're believing what God says about us. And so I want to encourage you today to believe what God says about you. Because if you'll believe what God says about you, you will become what God says about you. The opposite of that is playing around with our human reasoning. And when you mess around with human reasoning, it's going to push you away from the presence of God, the power of God, the influence of God in your life. So we want to deal with these speculations about life and relationships that are exalting themselves against the will of God, against the knowledge of God, and we must address them and pull them down and bring every thought into captivity. Make every thought obey Christ the anointed one. In Luke chapter 5, Jesus was dealing with a group of Pharisees and teachers, and the scripture says that Jesus recognized that the power of God was present to heal them. This is where there was a man that was paralyzed, and he had some friends that could not get into the house where Jesus was. So they, you remember, they climbed up on the roof and they tore the roof up and, and they lowered their friend by ropes down through the hole in the roof into the presence of Jesus, into the very room where Jesus was teaching these Pharisees and, and having conversation with them. And so the scripture says when Jesus saw their faith, when he saw the faith of the friends of this paralyzed man, he said, 
man, your sins are forgiven you. Isn't that an interesting statement? He didn't heal the man right away. Instead, he put an emphasis on the forgiveness of sins. He said, sir, your sins are forgiven. Now that really stirred up these Pharisees. It really stirred up their anger against Jesus. They began to say, and they reasoned with themselves, who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can, forgives, who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, watch this now, Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, why are you reasoning in your hearts? So here we have Jesus addressing this issue of human reasoning. He's speaking right to their opinions, right to their arguments, right to their speculations and their imaginations of their humanity. And he's addressing it in the lives of these Pharisees. Why do you reason like this among yourselves? Why are you reasoning? He perceived their thoughts. And then he says, which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or rise up and walk? In other words, the same power that forgives your sin is the same power that heals your body. It's the same power. It's not one is a greater power than the other. It's the same power of God. Jesus purchased both of these for us on the cross. He purchased the forgiveness of your sin and he purchased the healing of your body. So you can say, my sins are forgiven and you can say, my body is healed. Or you can look at another individual and you can say to them, based on their confession, your sins are forgiven and your body is healed. The same power, the same authority, does both of those actions. And so Jesus says, so that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And immediately the man was healed. So in order to show that the power of God was present to forgive sins, he speaks to the man and he commands him to be made whole. He heals him. The same power to heal the sick is the same power that forgives sin. So these Pharisees were reasoning in their heart, reasoning in their thoughts, reasoning in their minds. How could this be? They're calling these things blasphemies, even though they see the beneficial results that Jesus is bringing into the life of this man. And that's exactly what Paul is addressing in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. He's addressing our arguments, our human opinions, our human imaginations that lift themselves up against the knowledge of God. And when we lift up our thoughts against the knowledge of God, we are nullifying the power of faith in our lives. The way you think is either going to undermine your faith and make it weaker, or it's going to strengthen your faith and make it more effective. All right, you got it. So we overcome by faith. This is the good fight of faith that we are involved with today. Thanks for being on with me. I appreciate it. I'm grateful for you. I love you. Thanks for all the hearts. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the feedback. You are wonderful. I love you. I'm grateful for you. Listen, it's going to be a great day today. You've got open doors. You've got opportunities. You've got uh, divine connections. You've got resources coming. Money is coming. Favor with God and man. It's all your portion. You have all things in Christ Jesus. And that includes your healing today. In the name of Jesus, be made whole. I speak to sickness, I speak to disease, and I command it to leave your body now. And I declare health and wholeness and strength to you by the mighty name of Jesus. And if you've committed sin and you're repenting right now and you're confessing right now, in the name of Jesus, I declare to you, your sin is forgiven. Your sin is forgiven. All right? I love you. Thanks for being on with me today. God bless you. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Be warm out there. Have a great day. God bless you.